Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Maddles and today I have got game one of a best of three and it is going to be starting on Neo Planet S. It is between two very good players, a Protoss and a Terran. So let's introduce some spawning up in the top right position. We have got the blue Protoss player. It is White Raw. And his opponent down in the bottom left. The Red Terran from Team Complexity. It's the STC. So yeah, PVT on this map is always good fun. Now, Reapers and Blink Stalkers are two things that always spring to mind on this map because of the cliff area. I've seen many a Protoss players come down here and be like, Blink, and then kill a Terran. And I've seen many a Reaper come up here and be like, Boink, and then come in and kill lots of probes. And both of which are incredibly frustrating. Probably the Blink Stalkers are worse because if you, if you get caught off guard by those, you lose, generally speaking. So losing is worse than just losing a few probes, which you can potentially come back from. But yeah, this is going to be a really good game. As I said, game one of a best of three. So at least one more following this up. We'll have to wait and see exactly how many there are. I don't even know, which is really cool, because the event, like absolute legends, put in a blank replay file for game number three. Um, or, well, this, well, I don't know if it's a blank game, but there are three games there, and they do say that in other ones I've cast that, yeah, they always make sure that there's no way of knowing unless you actually click on it because they just include that third game in there too, which may or may not be um, the actual game. So, wait to see whether it's a dead file or whether it is actually a third game. But that was a bit of a sidetrack, I must admit. But yeah, here we go. We've got the assimilator coming down here for Wild, the refinery already up, plus a barracks. Seems like Reapers to me. So, this is all looking fairly solid from the STC. And from Wild, Wild he's going for a pretty normal thing. A lot of Protoss players are going for the two gas with two probes in each currently, but three, one gas with three, it's it's half a dozen of one and six of the other. So it's it's not something that I'm going to make a massive fuss about. But what I am going to make a massive fuss about is recently I put up my thousandth video and I'd like to thank Starcraft Reddit for being so awesome about that. I put a little post up thinking maybe a few people will like it and it got to like number two on the front page of StarCraft Reddit, so you guys are all awesome. But it also highlighted something really interesting, that actually, a lot of people hadn't even seen one of my casts, so that's why I'm asking you, the viewers, that if you like this, make sure you leave a cool comment, like the video, and also send a tweet out, or something like that. Just like, let any StarCraft friends you've got know about it, and say, hey, go check out this game, it's really cool, and then that'd be awesome. And would be, yeah, pretty cool. Now, anyway, we've got the engineering bay block coming down, which is always frustrating. The mothership core on its way down to, plus this Zella, which isn't getting skipped. So that means this Reaper that's perilously about to make its way into Iwa's base is going to discover the Zealot and can then kite it for all of eternity. But that means that this engineering bay is going to stay up even longer. And that means that the ne delay on the Nexus is going to be very substantial. The STC is getting down his command center behind this and he's busy getting a reactor too. But this engineering bay is so frustrating because it takes forever to just slowly whittle it away. And once it gets to the last hit, boom, the Terran player will cancel it and get most of their resources back. That really hurts. This probe getting a little bit of a, a little bit of gold. He's got the gold fronts. A little, a little bit gangster, I must say. That probe there, the mothership core, and the probe, and the zealot all going to town on this engineering bay. But are you ready? The council is going to go down in probably about five seconds or so. There we go. A bit earlier. Just playing it safe there, the STC. But that means the nexus can get started. Meanwhile, we've got more marine production on its way down. We've got the command center nearly out, plus an engineering bay back at home. So plus one can get started. This is a really early plus one. And um, that is something good to know because getting that down quite so soon, it is a build I saw it a couple of weeks ago, if my memory serves, where actually it was a really cool timing push with that plus one. And really just that. Nothing but plus one and moved across with a bunch of marines and it was really frustrating. It may have had combat shield with it. If I'm if I'm recalling correctly, it may have done, but yeah. Basically, plus one this early is unusual. We also have this Reaper still running around taking a check to make sure there's no proxies, but Waiwa, he's playing it pretty standard, getting a second gateway and its robotics facility, so nothing to be scared of here at the moment. The Reaper is just going to diligently check everywhere for any proxy pylons, any, well, any proxy stargates or things like that. Which are all possible builds. It's not uncommon to see a proxy stargate down in this sort of vicinity somewhere in order to send an oracle in, but usually you get that a lot earlier, so nothing to worry about. The Reaper is going to just want to get a good little look around, though. Did he manage to see the robotics facility? No, he didn't, so that in itself is quite a 
quite a miss. It's not the STC's fault, it's just unfortunate that the Reaper didn't go that way. However, that means the Wyrock will get the element of surprise. He's got his third gate up too. He's going to be actually be able to pump out quite a few units. Plus, this Robotics Bay is a really quick tech up into Colossi, and that's something that the STC needs to realize so he can get started on a starport and get down those lovely, lovely Vikings. But first, plus one, only 40 seconds away. Are we going to see a Mass Marine move out? Very possibly we could. The double tech lab on its way down. This plus one is so ridiculously early that I'm really hoping the STC is going to use it for something as opposed to just sitting back defensively because he doesn't have an armory coming down, which means he can't start plus two straight away, so it will have to be plus one armor if he does continue to upgrade. Stim on its way. Are we going to see combat shield two? Very well may do. Probably going to get a couple of marauders out as well just to be on the safe side. But yeah, looking around, so, oh, a small little supply block there, but why we are fixing that nice and quickly. So these two both looking pretty evenly out, actually. Nothing nothing really to make too big of a fuss of. We can see that 32 to 37 workers plus mules, though, for a Terran player. That means that it's all looking fairly similar, which isn't something that you really have to worry about that much. The Hallucinated Phoenix is coming in, going to get a little look, see the timings of the natural base. The natural base's gases as well are all coming down. There's Combat Shield. The pack factory is on its way. I don't believe the Colossus has, or any of the Colossus tech has been scouted yet. No, it hasn't. So this just means the STC is completely unaware of what Wydra is doing. Two additional ga uh, gates on their way. Wydra is about to go in for a big shove. We've got plus one infantry armor coming down too. So really big upgrade advantage here. Just going to really start making its way through. Unless Wydra gets a double forge out very quickly. But with the amount of gas he's pumping into these colossi, I just don't think he's going to be able to do it. Especially not with these additional gateways too. Because once Warp Gate Tech is done, which is just approaching it now, he is going to be able to pump out a lot of units. There we go. That is now pretty much all in. Already got three gateways, getting an additional four. That takes him up to seven gates, plus a robotics bay and robotics facility. The Colossus was just revealed, extended thermal lance on its way down. There's the scan, sees absolutely everything, sees all the additional gateways. Now it is just up to the STC to make a really good defense against this. Additional bunkers are getting thrown down. Extended thermal lance will make that a little bit harder. There are many marauders. Actually, there isn't a single marauder yet. The first two just in production as I speak. The first Vikings on their way down to the Colossus really is going to be the threat here. Is the STC? He's going to be able to hold off this push because if he can, he's going to be in a really nice spot with those upgrades. Plus one, in Terran infantry armor is not quite done yet. Stim is just kicking in though any second now. The Marauders just getting a couple of shots off on this Colossus. Wide Ra has to be so careful. There's these three bunkers here. He's waiting for the additional warp ins. The Colossus just going to use extended thermal lance in order to make sure that he can start chipping away at all this. He's got to be careful not to get too close. To the bunker, though, a couple of SCVs are going down, and this is buying time for the STC, allowing him to get down that plus one infantry armor. So now he's got the 1-1 one -one upgrades up against 0-0 zero -zero of Wairua, but Wairua, he is going for it, knowing he's got to do some good damage here. He's trying to take out the bunkers as quickly as possible, but as we see, the Marauders in the center are doing some nice damage to that Colossus. One Colossus is just near death, but managing to stay alive somehow. Two bunkers still up, though, and that is going to make things a lot harder. The Vikings are going to be able to snipe off a single Colossus now, and the Marauder count slowly getting higher. Concussive Shell nearly finished. Waiwa still putting on the pain. There's not too much here for the STC, but those bunkers are helping so massively in this defense. The Mothership Corps will get sniped off, and Waiwa slowly losing the reinforcing gateway units, the support units to this Colossus, means that... This is the STC just pushing forward. He's got a good number of units. The 1-1 upgrade's really starting to help him. And Wydra is not looking to be in a great spot here. Both bunkers are still up. And that is what is allowing it, the STC to do so nicely. Great little snipe off on that Colossus there. And Wydra being forced to retreat. But of course, behind this, yes, he's got a decent amount. But these Widow Mines... Well, there's a Widow Mine in there. Just the one... And just one Widow Mine already starting to rack up the kills. Four kills have already gone down. There is not an Observer. Oh, so there is an Observer on the field, but it's all the way across the other side of the map. Is this Widow Mine going to get off cooldown before it gets back? Most likely Pylons getting taken down here. These are just additional resources lost. There's the Widow Mine so close. Even if it gets, say, a Stalker, that's not a bad win for it because... That's, uh, that's a lot of resources down the drain and a significant chunk of Wyvar's army burn. A couple more probes going down. 11 workers killed by Wyvar, 7 killed by the STC. But the STC is only a couple behind. Plus, when you add in the fact that he's got those mules, actually his economy is looking pretty swish. Wyvar here getting down two additional 
for uh, sorry the first two forges so you can start kind of boosting out those double upgrades which will be very important the widow mine is detected by that observer so it's going to get taken down the vikings going to be forced back but look at these units making their way across the map there are two medevacs there two vikings plus a good amount of infantry with the 1-1 one -one upgrades up against 0-0 zero -zero upgrades of the protoss player so this is looking really good for the ACC. Waiwa has to hold this, and, and more importantly, he's got to make sure that he's got to follow up to this. There goes down the scan scene. Can I spot the observer? Unfortunately, it's just outside of the scan radius. So the SCC thinks he's getting through unbeknown, but actually Waiwa is trying to get in a prepared position. Unfortunately, those two Colossi are really the saving grace of Waiwa from time being. The SCC has got to prioritize them because they will deal so much damage to this infantry. But SCC knows that if the front is covered, let's go into the main. And this is a big push out as well from Waiwa here. He's moving all the stalkers forward, trying to push this back. Hopefully he realizes there's not quite enough units there and will spot this drop coming down. Instant reactions from the Grand Partos. He's pulling all of his units back, but straight away the Cybernetics Core gets taken down. No more stalkers, no more sentries. The Nexus is getting focused, and even if that goes down, which it will, this pickup can now get straight out of there. And that was a fantastic snipe down for the SCC, pushing Waiwa down to just one mining base to the two of his own. Economically speaking, the Terran player is in a fantastic spot right now. Take a look at this income difference. The SDC just pulling in so many more resources. Waiwa really in a lot of trouble now. He's almost got to go in all in because if he doesn't, and if he doesn't take out a base or deal significant economic damage, he's not going to be able to catch back up with the production capability here. The additional drops coming down the proxy pylon has been spotted. There aren't any more down. That means no more reinforcements. Waiwa supply block quite heavily to the Colossi out in front of the rest of his army. Do get sniped down very quickly. And now with no area of effect damage, no splash, this infantry is just tearing through the gateway units. Only a handful of marauders for the time being, but behind it, more infantry coming in. Just going for that sandwich movement. And Waiwa, ever the gentleman with the well played and game one goes to the STC. So if you enjoyed that, make sure you like the video, leave a cool comment and subscribe, then flick over to my channel and I'll see you at game two in just one second.